The Lord be with you. Welcome to this fourth and final week of Advent. Um, We have been in this very echoey room that has seemed to have been getting gloomier week by week as we progress closer and closer to Christmas, closer and closer to the shortest day of daylight in the year. Um, And my impression was that this room was getting gloomier and gloomier And yet today, for whatever reason, it is bright as all get out. So uh, if you aren't too blinded, uh, we have been working our way through these songs of Advent. Uh, These are songs that are in the scriptures, particularly Luke's gospel, um, as people respond to hearing the news or experiencing the birth of Jesus. Um, These are songs technically in the sense that they are monologues from people in their reactions, Um, monologues that contain both poetry and prophecy. Uh, So Luke has lots of these scattered throughout his gospel and certainly a lot right in the front. We have looked at all of these ones just from chapter 1. So we've seen uh, that Elizabeth has a song where she, uh, in responding to Mary coming to visit her, says, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. So her song is just full of these beatitudes, very short, but very rich. Uh, Then Mary has a song of response to Elizabeth's greeting and her blessings, Uh, We often call this the Magnificat, where she glorifies God. And uh, only part of it is her own personal response. A lot of her song connects to this being a fulfillment of God's promises to his people, Israel, going all the way back to the times of Abraham. Uh, And then we have Zechariah's song. So after Mary and Elizabeth meet, after Zechariah has been mute for the entire pregnancy of Elizabeth. Uh, Finally, he is able to speak at the birth of John, and he goes into his own song, which are uh, both part of uh, his response and his prophecy over John and John's ministry to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Uh, But also, uh, just like Mary's song, uh, he connects it to what God has been doing with his people, Israel, down through the ages. And now for this fourth and final week of Advent, we are going to look at one more song, uh, this time from the angels. As it appears uh, at the beginning of chapter 2 of Luke's Gospel, uh, we'll read verses 8 through 14. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, or the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. These are the true and enduring words of our eternal God. So some people might not classify the original angel's appearance as a song, but it's interesting it is a monologue. At the very least, it sets up the song of the heavenly host, the rest of the angelic choir, as they appear after the announcement. But you will see a lot of the same themes as in the very brief song that the angels sing. Uh, He says that this is good news. This is where we get our word gospel from. He's bringing gospel. 
He's bringing glad tidings about a child who is born. It will be joyous for all people. Uh, we know from other historical documents that this was common among the Roman Caesars and kings, uh, that when one of them was born, or when one of them took the throne, this announcement of good news, of gospel, of good tidings went out to the people to talk about what a joyous occasion this was. Uh, this is more than just a Roman emperor. Uh, this is more than just a Jewish Messiah. This is the one who is born Savior of the world. This will be good news for all people. And it starts today. The announcement begins today. The rejoicing begins today. That in the city of David, it's important that this Christ child, this Messiah, is born in the city of his ancestor David because that shrinks the timeline for us. It connects us to fulfilled prophecy that there was always going to be one to sit on the throne of his father David. And now finally, that one is born. Today, it is good news. Today, the Messiah, the Christ in Greek, the Lord, is here. And then all of a sudden, all the glory of heaven opens up and all of the angelic host come out. And they begin this very short but very powerful and rich song. Uh, glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth... Peace to those on whom his, that is God's, favor rests. Uh, some of us may have learned this in an older English style. Uh, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill to men or goodwill to humankind. It's the same idea. And I think the importance is that there is now a time, as reflected in this song, where heaven and earth are fully brought together. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace upon earth on those on whom God's favor rests. So the people on earth who have been waiting for Messiah from God, from heaven, uh, heaven has come down to earth. Now, earth and heaven are united. God is glorified, and it's good news because the reign of peace has begun with the birth of this little child. Sometimes we don't think about these shorter songs, of their importance, of the depth of their meaning, and for the good news that they bring to us even in our own day. But as we celebrate the birth of Messiah Jesus, as we look forward to the coming again of Messiah Jesus, as we celebrate Christmas and finish Advent well, may we hear the echo of the angelic song, not just in the ancient past, but in our own days. God is steadily bringing his kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, the heavenly rule to earth. It has begun in the birth of Jesus. It will be completed in the second advent, the return of Jesus. And when it is complete, there will be peace. God's favor continues to rest upon humanity, and we can continue to rejoice and give good tidings to all of those around us. His peaceful reign is breaking in now, but we are still waiting for its fullness. Beloved, may you have a good last few days of Advent, and I pray that your Christmas tide is holy and blessed. And until the next time, may the peace of God rest upon you. Amen. <laughs>